Right, hi, uh, welcome. It's uh, the Wine Cellars uh, English Tour again. Now, the weather is not as good as it normally is, unfortunately. I've got a coat on, I've even got a shirt on as well. Uh, but we're here, we've come out of Kent, and we're now in uh, Sussex. We're near Polborough, and we're here to see Joseph, um, who is the youngest vineyard owner in the UK and he owns Kingsbrook Vineyard and they do some three fantastic wines here and we're gonna have a little chat with Joseph and talk about the whole history of how he's got to where he is now at 27 years old amazing uh, so uh, we'll see you in a bit and uh, catch up soon okay right hi uh, we're back again um, now we're back in the middle of all these vines um, we're here to see Joseph. Hi Joseph, we can't shake like that. We're gonna try and be a little bit distance, aren't we? Um, as we can. Um, so there's a lot of history here. Um, as I said in my intro, uh, Joseph, I said in my intro that um, you're the youngest vineyard owner uh, in the UK. If you don't mind me saying you're 27 years old. Yeah, I yeah. forget, but yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forget my age, I'm a little bit older than you. Um, but yeah, you do tend to forget your age when you get older. I'm, I'm 50. Two-ish, I think. You know. um, but yeah, so the youngest. Now, what, what's the history here? Because I've noticed here straight away. What I've noticed that um, it's not very hilly. No, sure, yeah, yeah. And um, most of the places we've been to, um, quite hilly, um, very chalky. We're at Compton Kent, very limestoney. Um, so, what's the history, and, and where, how, how did you get to where you are now, and how did you start? And, sure, yeah. Um, so I know your grandfather sort of. To go over is it William? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Place? So, so we we had um, we have the benefit of basically having a the land purchased years and years ago. So obviously land value was a lot less than Sussex then. Yeah, so was, yeah. there was a mushroom farm up the top of the hill, which was the biggest mushroom farm in Europe at the time. This is in '79. Yeah. We bought these four fields off them. So uh, that was that's how we actually came to acquire the land. The truth is the land here is low. We've got a brook running through the middle. We've actually got a brook running through the middle of all our vineyards, hence the name Kingsbrook. Kingsbrook, okay. Oh, so we, uh, this site is a mixture. We've got loam as a top 30 centimeters and then our, our sub base is clay. So people say, you know, what can you grow vines on clay? The truth of it is you can grow vines on anything. It's how you manage it. Yeah. So yeah. we're on a sub clay base here. Our issues might be drainage uh, compared to someone who's on chalk or sand, yeah, yeah. but our benefits of nutrient holding capacity, heat holding uh, potential in the soil is much higher. The benefit of how I got around it is there's 6,000 meters of drainage under your feet that I did before planting. Oh, there so there's ways yeah. of, as what they say about you have to sort of live in your yeah. vineyard or know your vineyard to get the best. So you sort of there. managed that really before you sort of worked all that out before you actually started planting the vines to make sure that it'll work. There'd be nothing yeah, worse than planting the vines. Oh, could you imagine having to start again? <laughs> so <laughs> you're worse, as you're worse. And you've actually hand plucked. Well, you actually started with a, a spade yourself, for want of a better word, <laughs> or to use. Yeah, we, many, back in 2014, was it? You actually, well, yeah, we, we actually we, sort of got sort of got the land. You know, actually took over. Yeah, so we yeah. we wanted to make a product. Uh, we wanted to get into the viticultural world yeah. and the winemaking world. So yeah. the best way to do that before vines get up to production is to buy grapes a negotiant style wine or a producer style wine where you buy grapes from the best growers you yeah. select and then you make a wine with your wine maker in the style that's where our 2014 uh, sparkling vintage cuvee comes from the still wines have come from our own grapes from the orchard site our first vineyard oh, up okay. the yeah but um yeah and then you know that is why you're waiting for your vines to get up to production because the vineyard you're standing in now is three years old. It yeah. won't bear fruit until another year. Yeah. So that's four years until you get yeah, the first to get fruit. harvest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's amazing. So, um, so going back to your uh, grandfather, who, who um, William, who, who bought the place or purchased the land back in 1959. Is that right? 69. 69. 69 moved, sorry, he moved to Brook Green. Right. 79. He bought these fields. Right. Okay. And you plant. So you planted your first what? Uh, 2015. No. So the well, yeah, yeah, the you... first field in total was 2017. 2017. Wow. Oh, Brook Green. That yeah. was the one that yeah. we got. A small harvest off which we made the Bacchus and the Pinot Green right, in, 20, okay. in the third yeah. year of growth. Yeah. You then planted this field you're standing in in 2018 and then Piketty 2 out the back in yeah. 2019. So we've done three years of planting, 17, right. 18, 19. Wow. So you, you rapidly, that's quite that's, that's quite a lot isn't it? It's a short space of time you know. Yeah you, yeah. Want, you want to pick the, 
you have to make your plan, pick your number. There's obviously average predictions yeah. in English wine, Go very hard it. to do. But to be honest, they yeah. take a long, long time to get going. Yeah. And because of that, we thought we'd yeah. get up, get planting and, and, and see. So the vines here, what, what, have you, what are you growing here? And where are we actually standing? Yeah, now? you're standing in the Chardonnay. In the Chardonnay, okay. We have so this is going to be really for your sparkly um, coming up. So fundamentally you're using, you're using Bacchus, using um, Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of a... So we have we have the three grapes in this field, a Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot yeah. Mernier. Oh, they, Pinot Mernier, okay. They yeah, go yeah. into our sparkling wine. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, at the other side we have the Bacchus and Pinot yeah. that we use for the still wine. Okay, okay, so that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a quite a mixture of stuff we've got going yeah. on here. Yeah, and there's all the right stuff that you need. So um, so where, where where do you see yourself, what's, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? What, sure. Where, where, do you, where do you see yourself going? For me, it's Being a, the youngest yeah. guy <laughs> hopefully I've, hopefully I've in got the country. A bit, of, bit of hair left, I've lost most of well, it. Well, I went grey sort of, you know, um, in my late 30s, so, uh, you know, I feel your pain. Sure. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Uh, we're yeah. trying to make this place yeah. a premium visitor destination. Yeah. So the, the viticultural side and the grapes will keep yeah. getting planted, yeah. but we want to add more hospitality, so we'll get to that. Yeah. But we want to have a winery on site, yeah. we want to have accommodation on site, and we also want to have the food elements, whether that's events yeah. or a restaurant. Yeah. Eventually, we want to have the all-encompassing enjoyment that is around wine yeah. and food. Yeah. And keeping it simple as well. Because we noticed when we come over here, um, didn't we, Nat, um, Nat who's uh, filming at the moment, is that we just loved when we first pulled up um, how simple it was in a, in a great way, you know, very natural way. And uh, we had a, a, a first uh, drink the little bar up there which we're gonna um, see in a minute so I think um, what we'll do now um, we'll go and taste uh, some of this fantastic wine that Joseph um, has produced uh, over the last few years which I find is quite amazing to be fair take my hat off I know how much work goes behind all this and uh, yeah I think let's go and taste some of it now yeah be good okay right so we're back um, now we're back to do the the, the, the most popular thing uh, that I like to do is to taste the wine. Um, so we've got three three here. We've got the Pinot, we've got the Bacchus, and we've got the Sparkly. Okay, so um, Joseph, um, tell me about your uh, your Pinot. What's, sure. uh, what's happening before we? Before you pour for me. Sure, no problem. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Pinot Gris uh, comes from uh, the Alsace region in France. So there's two types of Pinot, Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio. So Pinot Gris is a mouth coating, oily textured wine. It comes from a genetic claim similar to Pinot Noir. It's a grey grape, hence Gris. Yeah. Uh, but what it produces is this wonderfully medium to full bodied white wine. So if you like your white wine slightly more robust, yeah. It can, it's the most versatile food wine. So if you want to have it with something like roast chicken, even Thai food, something spicy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Pinot Gris is the, is the, is the one for you, for sure. Yeah. It's how a little taste then. It's how a little so it's got a pale lemon, slightly golden hue to it. Um, on the nose, people are noting particularly stone fruit. Um, because it has that neutral ability in the winemaking, we try to preserve it. So we did minimal winemaking on this, so it counts as a vegan wine. We didn't use proteins in the wine to clean it. It's naturally clarified, and it comes across as a very clear, um, direct wine that, to be honest, we've made such small batches of it, selling out extremely quickly. Now again, I know I always say this, but um, in every uh, vineyard we've been to, there's always a slightly different taste. Obviously, it's your own, you can just feel your own taste here, can't you? It's usually your very own. This is what the English wine industry is all about not mass produced this is you know locally produced and you can, you can it's just gorgeous thank you and and it's and it's worth paying that premium money we talked about earlier on off camera for this you know you get your four pound 99 and your five pound probably but actually do come out and see these guys um, because you are going to taste something good this is beautiful thanks this very much lovely. cheers mm. Mm. very nice so uh, that's the um you know grease done yep so, um, also I can't drink all that because I'm, I'm driving. Um, so, tell me about the, uh, the shorts. Um, I'll just uh, use the decanter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
this is what Spend you can do, see, when you're on your own midline, you can just throw it away. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Bacchus, yeah. It's, it's doing, it's making waves in the UK. It is, isn't it? Every, everywhere we go, everyone's using the Bacchus grape. So, it's, it's the um, fourth most yeah. heavily planted after the three yeah. sparkling varieties. Um, the reason so is it does so well in the English climate. Is it so versatile all over? Is that, is that what it's, that's the, yeah, it, yeah, so that cool weather climate yeah. we get suits itself to a highly yeah. aromatic grape. We don't have the ripening potential of something like a Sauvignon Blanc mm. or a Riesling, but mm. this does come from the same family yes, as Riesling. Yes, German, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Riesling, then it was Silvana, which yeah. is an unknown grape, created Bacchus. And Bacchus is, in, in, in very much essence, an English hedgerow. Yeah. So that's why it, it's a go-to sort of thing. It pulls yeah, yeah. people to... Yeah. Some people here at Kinsbrook who don't uh, necessarily like their wine as full-bodied or as rich, and yeah. they like a fresh, easier drinking, highly aromatic wine, they would tend to lean towards the Bacchus. Yeah. Oh, straight away you can just taste the difference. So it's, it's, the, it's, it's like nose it. is extremely punchy. Mm, um, it's a very easy. intense uh, notes of the main things that are pulling out of gooseberry, but elderflower is the number one uh, uh, note on the nose. Oh, God, yeah. So... Yeah. Flowery. Yeah. Flowery. Yeah. Mm, so there is nice. the, there's the, the reason we made a wine like that is you have the Pinot Gris, and you have the Bacchus are made on completely different ends of the spectrum for white wine and we've done it that way to pull them apart so people can have the different wine for different occasions. Yeah, that's a lot lighter. Yep, absolutely. Definitely a lot lighter this wine. Um, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of, of Bacchus anyway, but um, worth a try again. That's beautiful, that is absolutely Brilliant. beautiful. Um, so, uh, obviously, because we want to keep this uh, um, timeline as we are. Sure. Um, the, uh, the sparkly. This is always a favourite, obviously. Um, in the, uh, I, I don't really want to throw that away. I, I Please <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't say that. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I can't believe I've just thrown an absolute spot on. Uh, well, we've got to get through them all. We've got to get through them all. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, yeah, tell me all about the. Uh, sure. So this yeah. is our what I'd call our flagship wine. It's the wine that we yeah. produce the most of. It's the grapes we've got planted the most at Kinsbrook. Um, the English climate plus investment and experience is now making English wine extremely successful and competing on the world stage. Yeah. So, sparkling wine, this is a blend of three grapes. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier at 60%, 25% and 15% retrospectively through, through, the, through the three grapes I just mentioned. It is a premium wine for the reason of the amount of time it is sat in a cellar on lees, meaning most wines that you taste in non-vintage will be around 18 months and then three years for vintage or premium yeah. wine is the minimum. This has spent five years. So in July 2015, it went into the cellar, sat there all the way till June 2020 where it was disgorged. The yeast was popped out. Wow. And now you have a wine that has taken on a golden yellow color because of the amount of uh, color extracted from the yeast. Oh, yeah, you can, see, you can see the gold. And it's on just, the nose, yeah. you have this amazing bready brioche taste that you only get with wine that's gone through that autolytic uh, flavour spectrum from from being sitting from sitting on the yeast. You don't just have the fruit; you also have the secondary. Yeah, it's quite sharp as well, isn't it? Sort of. Well, yes. The the, mm. the good thing about this wine is it had a high natural acidity when we put it on lees, so it could age for longer. Yeah. So those two elements you need for aging wine in red wine tannins, in white wine acidity. This has that natural high acidity from from the vintage of the cane. Well, <clears throat> look, we could spend all day here. Um, drinking this uh, fabulous stuff again um, great stuff and I just wanted to um, uh, point out the, 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 the kin yes obviously Kingsbrook but um, you just told us earlier on it's um, all about the next of kin and following on absolutely in, you know with the history when you make a label you yeah. really want to tell a little story in there so kin as the part of next of kin but also Kinsbrook yeah also you have if you ever look in closer there's the Safel or the family brackets which encompasses the thing that you get on a family tree yeah gotcha. so it's yeah, there's yeah. lots of little touches yeah. within our label to tell a story and I like that because we've all got a story um, you know and definitely a fabulous story here today um, with you Joseph um, being the youngest uh, vineyard owner in the UK and what you've done I'm quite, I'm so impressed, it's, it's unreal really. Thank you very much. Um, so again, well, look, we're, we're just bringing it all together. It's, it's the family run yeah. business. Look, we're a family run business at the Wine Cellar Company. We do a premium product. These guys are doing a premium product. It's a family run business and may it continue. It's absolutely amazing. Guys, get yourself down here. If you, if you, even if you're around the country somewhere, but you want to go on holiday or you're visiting Polborough, 
Hawks folk. Yeah, yeah, me. West Chilterton Road. West Chilterton Road. Get yourselves down here. It's a fabulous place, and Joseph and the team will really look after you, and you can taste some fantastic wines. I'm telling you, it's bad. Uh, so that's from me, Joseph. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. We'll have to shake hands with you. We can't, but uh, we'll see you on the next tour. We may be doing Sussex, but we may not. You have to wait and see. See you later.